So in the current time, we're talking about imports and exports. Strong currency or a weak currency? How does it affect our exports and imports? Right? What is QE and what is the carry trade? Kim Da Gyeong, the first question. If we have a strong currency, what happens to exports and imports? Stand strong currency? Yes. Mm -hmm. What's the exchange rate of the one and the dollar? The dollar is 1,101. Can you give me an example? What would be a strong Korean one? One dollar would be equal to how many one? My hundred. So in this case, what it should happen in theory to create imports and exports? Import is. So Kim Da Gyeong. people are going to buy iPhones at this price, or more people are going to buy iPhones at this price? What are you more likely to buy an iPhone, at 440000 or 360000 Yeah, so which one are people going to buy more iPhones? Stronger one or weaker one? Hmm? This is weak one, this is strong one. Okay, do you understand why it's strong? You need less one to buy one dollar. This is weak, you need love one to buy one dollar. Okay? So the strong one, the imports are cheaper. Do you understand? Imports are cheaper with a strong one. So imports are going to increase. Right? With the weak one, imports are expensive. So it's going to be. We said here in the article the last time, a strong currency can drive exporters bankrupt, right? So in the other case, if 
we are exporting to the US. What do Koreans export to the US? What do you sell in the US from Korea? The Samsung Galaxy phone. How much does that cost? Say it costs 400,000 won in Korea. Right? What's the price in dollars here? Divide by 1.1, it's going to be about $370. Okay. It's going to be $440, right? Or more or less the same, right? So, in which case are people going to buy more Galaxy smartphones? Korean one. What? Okay, the weaker one, this Galaxy phone is going to be less, cheaper in dollars. Okay? The one is stronger, it's going to cost more dollars to buy their Galaxy phone. Okay? So, can you understand that exporters can be bankrupt? Are Americans going to buy the Galaxy phone here or not? No. No, it's too expensive. So the Galaxy Samsung goes bankrupt. Do you want Samsung to go bankrupt? <laughs> hmm? Do you want a very strong one? Hmm? Strong one is good if you go on holidays, but it's bad for your exporters, right? So we said that countries these days are happy for their currencies to depreciate. It helps their exporters gain market share loosens monetary conditions. Okay? So we, we mentioned Switzerland had a problem with their currency was too strong and the people was going bankrupt. Companies were going bankrupt because their currency was too strong. So many countries are doing QE. So what is QE? Uh, <coughs> Moon Ju Wan. Where is Moon Ju Wan? Yes, what is QE? Here we saw in the graph, the Federal Reserve was doing QE in the US. QE, QE. What does QE mean? What are they doing? What is the central bank doing? The central bank is doing QE. Printing money, right? More official way for QE? Increasing the money supply, right? In the economy. Increasing the money supply in the economy. We could say printing money. Some people don't like to hear that. We can say that, right? So they're increasing the money supply by using QE. Okay? Loose money conditions, low interest rate, and QE is basically buying the bad debts, buying loans, buying assets, putting the money into the economy, buying government bonds and bank loans. So then the last question, Park Hyun Ju. Yes. Right country, yes. yes. Depositing. Depositing. Yeah. Depositing the money where? <laughs> Bananas. <laughs> Depositing the money where? <laughs> Interest rate country, right? Yeah. Yes. So we said that if a country is doing QE, do we expect them to have inflation? Yes, increasing the money supply, we should expect inflation. Okay. So, increase inflation. <coughs> so, if the currency has in Increase inflation, do we expect the currency to get weaker or stronger? Right. 
so it should be a weaker currency. Okay, it should be a weaker currency. What this article explaining is explaining in the floating exchange rate regime, this is stopping it from becoming a weaker currency. Okay? So the carry trade, it should be weaker here because of these things, but the carry trade is stopping uh, because <coughs> it's working in the opposite way. Okay? So the high inflation currency like Japan, Australia and other countries, even though they have high inflation, uh, the low inflation country like Japan uh, is could be getting stronger because of the carry trade. Okay. So we learned about those things. So then let's move on to today's topic. So we're going to talk about the foreign exchange market. So this is referred to, to as the Forex or the FX market. It is the market where one currency is traded for another currency. For example, buying yen and selling dollars. That is the FX market. Buying dollars through selling euros. So the foreign exchange market is the mechanism by which one transfers purchasing power from one country to another. Do you understand purchasing power? Yes. What does another word for purchasing? Oh, I don't know. Buying power. Okay. So if I have dollars, I can buy things in the US. So I have buying power in the US. Okay. Provides credit for international trade. What's another word for credit? Credit. <coughs> loans. Loans, right? Provides loans for international trade. Because if I buy something, let's say we looked at the example, a US company buys bicycles from the UK. It's a kind of normal thing in business to give credit to the US company. Because the US company didn't sell the bicycles yet, right? The US company ordered the bicycles from Britain. But they didn't sell the bicycles, so they don't have much money. So the British company is going to give them credit or a loan loan off the bicycles for, until they sell the bicycle and pay back the money. Okay? So normally about 90 days the companies give some credit. Uh, it moves funds across borders. So people want to invest in and buy a house or buy stocks in another country. It minimizes exposure, we'll talk about it later. Do you understand exposure? If I stay out exposed in the sun too long, what will happen? Skin on and okay, Why? Because you're exposed to the sun. So we also have being exposed to risk. So if we are exposed to risk, it means we're not protecting ourselves. If we're exposed to the sun, we're not protecting ourselves with clothes or cream. If we're exposed to risk, we're not protecting ourselves against the risk. Okay? So we want to minimize this kind of exposure, not being protected. Exposure means not being protected. Uh, we look at forward contracts, for example. Commercial transactions do not involve using phys physical currency, but often represent changes in bank deposits. So we can buy yen in the bank and sell a dollar in the bank. So we don't actually move the money, just the bank changes its deposit. Okay. So who are the main participants in the FX market? So discuss with your partner. Who do you think? Who are we going? Who are you going to see here? Don't look at the answer. Just have a guess with your partner. What would be written here? Who are the main participants? What's the meaning of the physical currency? Physical currency means cash. cash. So 
So who do you think is a participant then in the FX market? Banks. Banks. Who else? Investors. Hedge funds. Speculators. Speculators. Do you have the answer in front of you? Right? <laughs> no banks. Uh, companies. Speculators. Central banks. Uh, shouldn't participate very often, but in the managed currency, they participate every day. Foreign exchange brokers like Oanda. Okay. Oanda is a foreign exchange broker. So we have the main tier, which is the interbank or wholesale market, and then we have the client or retail market. So the wholesale market represents over 80% of the total market. Do you understand wholesale? Yes. What does wholesale mean for goods? Factory makes the goods. The goods go to the wholesaler, right? The wholesaler sells to the retailer. Okay? So let's say it's wood. Factory makes the furniture. Okay, in the middle we have the wholesaler. They don't sell the furniture to the customer. Okay, they get all the furniture from the factory and they sell to the different retailers. Okay? And then the retailer sells to the customer. So a little bit similar for the banks. Okay? Retail market, people, customers buying and selling for an exchange. Interbank market, just between banks. Okay? The interbank market is 100, 200 banks, mainly worldwide. They will buy and sell currencies with each other. Most of the forex is transacted through about 10 banks. So we have Deutsche Bank in Germany. They have the biggest share of the FX market for banks. UBS, do you know UBS? Barclays, City, <coughs> JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, HBSC, Credit Suisse, Morgan Stanley. These are our main global banks, right? We can notice there are many European banks and UK banks here. So we'll talk about why Europe is important in the foreign exchange market later. So what is the biggest market in the world? Can anybody tell me? Biggest market. What's the biggest market in the world? US. Bond market, stock market, US. egg market, US. automobile market. US. Hmm? US. Smartphone market. What's the biggest market in the world? China. Currency markets. If you buy smartphones from another country, you need to buy and sell currencies, right? So, <coughs> if you want to buy stocks in another country, you need to buy and sell currencies. So, the world's largest financial market, $4 trillion a day in trade. So, that's a very liquid market, especially the euro and the dollar. So, if the euro dollar is 30% of that, it means $1 trillion is being traded against the euro every day. So if you're doing the dollar-euro trade on the Oanda, there's $1 trillion being traded in that trade. Okay. So the New York Euronext Stock Exchange is about $40 billion, right? Just to compare, that's the stock market. We'll need another two zeros to make the foreign exchange market. So the market is uh, over the 24-7, 24, 24 days a week, hours a day, seven days a week, over the counter market. <coughs> Middle East markets also open on the weekend, for example. There is no central trading, there's no world foreign exchange market. Trades take place through computers and telephone connections all over the world. So you can do the trade on the computer, okay? buy and sell the currency on the computer. You could also call your bank if you have an account with your bank tell them to buy or sell currencies, okay? So we can see that it has increased uh, these days to about four trillion dollars a day. So which are the largest foreign exchange centers? So the UK is the largest one with 
36%. Then we have the US with 18%. Then we have Japan with 6%. See, the UK is getting a little bit bigger. Okay. So when China, China are talk, talking about making their currency more open, buying and selling their currency more. So Britain, the UK was traveling to China to try and get this market. The UK wants to get this market for changing to Chinese currency too. Right? So finance is important to the US, UK and US economies. Right? You can see the UK economy finance is even more important than the US economy. Other trading centers in, you can see Singapore, Switzerland, Hong Kong, so in Asia, we have, close to here, we have Japan and Hong Kong, major trading centers. Australia, France, Denmark, Germany, Canada, Sweden, Korea, Russia. Which currency has been traded? US dollar. US dollar. This should add 200%. So we could probably have this down to 40. 42% is US, right? Because currency, there's always two currencies being traded against each other, right? So these should add 200%. Total. Okay, so we can see the US dollar getting a little bit less important, but still very important okay, in the world. So this is because the US dollar was uh, used to be the UK pound before the world wars, right? But the US was the only country which wasn't damaged during the war. So they were able to uh, negotiate that the US dollar would be the reserve currency. This is an advantage for the US. Everybody uses the US dollars a lot. Okay. Then the next one is the Euro. <clears throat> some people, even officials in the Euro area, they come out with some conspiracy theory like the US want to break up the Euro area because they feel threatened by the Euro currency. Right? Uh, but I don't believe that conspiracy theory. Right? <laughs> But you get some official, official guys from high position in the EU who say those kind of things, right? The US is out to get the euro area and break it up because they, they don't like the euro currency. It's starting to get more important, right? Euro currency is starting to get more important. More people are using that. This was just in 1998. Then the Japanese yen is the next one. Great British pound. So we can see that this reads like the Rwanda, right? These are the main currencies which are traded in the world. US dollar, then Euro, then Japanese yen about half. Euro about half of the US dollar, yen about half of the Euro, pound about half of the yen, Australian dollar about half of the pound, Swiss franc, Canadian dollar, Hong Kong, Sweden, New Zealand. So why, why is China not here? Why is Russia not here? Why is Brazil and India? Why are they missing from here? They, they have managed. They're not free-floating currencies. It means they manage their currency, right? It's, there is some restriction on buying and selling currencies. Okay. So people don't want to. Speculators don't want to trade a managed currency that much. Speculators, like we explained, they're not happy with just a five percent return. They could get a 5% return by investing in some, somewhere else, right? So if they just get a 5% return from a managed currency, they're not that interested. Okay, so we're mainly looking at these are the traded currencies, so free floating currencies, right? So here we have other currencies, the one, the dollar, Singapore dollar, Norway, Mexico, India, Russian ruble. We can see that it's quite low, but getting bigger, right? Green 1 has gone from 0 0.2 to 1.5. Okay. So what that means is if a Korean company makes a contract with a Chinese company, what currency do you think they use? US dollars. Probably they're going to use US dollars, right? The Korean company will have to buy US dollars and then the give to the Chinese company and they'll have to sell the US dollars and get the local Chinese currency. Okay. So we get an idea that it's changing a little bit. Some countries are making some agreement, currency agreement, which means that they swap the currency from their central bank to the other central bank. So the Chinese central bank gives its money to the Korean central bank. The Korean central bank gives its money to the Chinese central bank. So there can be more direct 
uh, changes between the currencies. But currently, companies that then maybe they're changing slowly. They're still using dollars mainly, right? Or euros, those kind of things for the transaction. So, again, the currency pair, do you understand the currency pair, the two currencies? So we can see the, the, the details about the currency pair. So, in percentage, US dollar and euro, 30%, 28, 27, 28, right? The other currency is catching up a little bit. So, let's move on then to the types of foreign exchange transaction. So, we have three types, spot, forward, and swap. So, let's talk about each one. Okay, spot is today, like, today I, I change the money, okay? So, just now. Spot transaction requires the almost immediate delivery of the foreign exchange. Forward transaction, forward donates future, but future is different. Future contract has different meanings, so that's why they use forward here. In two options, in forward. Hmm? In two options, forward. Two options, what do you mean? Uh, in price up or price down. Yes, forward it could be a higher price or a lower price exchange rate. We'll talk about it in a minute, right? So, in forward, transaction requires delivery at a future date, not now. So it could be five days later, two months later, a year later. Okay? How do we decide the exchange rate? The exchange rate is decided by looking at the difference in interest rates between the two countries. Okay? Uh, we have, normally they're quoted for one, two, three, six, twelve months. You can call the bank and make a specific contract, but usually they're, these are the ones that are used. Swap. Do you understand swap? Hmm? Will you swap me your smartphone for this pen? <laughs> hmm? Swap? No? Okay, you don't understand swap? <laughs> That's a good swap. So, we purchase and sell for an exchange, but it has to be on two different dates. So we're going to have spot today and forward in the future. Okay. So uh, one buys or sells a currency in the spot market, and then buys or sells the same back in the forward market at the same time. We make the transaction at the same time, okay? but the dates are different. One is a spot and the other is a forward. So let's explain about swaps. So corporations use FX swaps for funding in different countries. So assume a corporation has euros in the bank in Europe, and it needs dollars in the US just for three months. Okay, then it's going to get the money, take the money back to Europe again. So I have euros that I, I have now in the bank. I have a choice. I could get a loan in the US for three months, but I have to pay the interest on the loan. I think it's better to use the euros I have. Okay? So I want to change those euros into dollars for three months, and then change them back from dollars to euros at the end of the three months. And I know I need to do that. So I'm going to make a spot transaction and a forward transaction. Okay? So we, we don't want a foreign exchange risk. What we could do is we could just buy the, the US dollars now, and we could wait for three months, and then change back. But what's the risk if we do that? In price, they don't. Uh, we, could, we need dollars in the US, and then we're going, we don't need it after three months. So what's the risk if I just buy the dollars now, just wait for three months, and then change back to euros? Time risk, no. Exchange rate risk, right? What happens if the the US dollar gets a lot weaker? Will I get as many euros back? No. No, I'm going to get less euros back in the end. Okay? So that's the risk. So what can I do to stop that risk? I can make a forward contract. So the exchange rate is similar to today's rate, not that much bigger or less. Okay? So, 
it would like to use its euros, but it doesn't want foreign exchange risk. So we're going to sell the euros at the spot rate for the US dollars, and sim simultaneously means at the same time, buy a three month forward contract. Buy back the euros and deliver US dollars after three months. So it will be at the similar exchange rate to today. And that's a contract. Okay, so we have to, the bank has to respect the contract. After three months, the US dollar gets a lot weaker, right? So the bank has, is sorry they made a contract, right? The bank still has to, has to give you back, even though the US dollar is weaker, they need to give you back the same amount of euros as three months ago. Okay? So the bank takes on the risk, but it's a contract, so they can't change their mind. How can the bank do that? Well, the bank also has other customers who are changing the other way around, right? So the bank can balance out the risk better than the companies. So uh, what kind of transaction is used the most? We can see here 2010, uh, we said about 4 billion. 1.5 billion is just spot transactions. Swaps. Uh, FX foreign exchange swaps is, is 1.7, it's higher. Okay. Then we have just outright forwards. So anyway, the swap is a combination of spots and forwards, right? But this is when people do that together, spots and forwards together. Okay. And then spot and forward by themselves. And then options we will talk about later in the course. So we can see FX swaps is quite high, it's 44%. So let's look at another example of swaps. Okay, I want to invest in the Argentinian. It's the year 2000. I think Argentina is a good prospect. I'm going to invest in Argentinian stocks. Okay, but my son is going to the university next year, 2002, <laughs> two years later. Okay, so I want to invest in Argentinian stocks. I hope to make. I think I'm going to make a 50% profit. Right, so right now I have $10,000 and I want to get up to $15,000, right? So what do I need to do? <clears throat> what should I do here? I want to invest in the Argentinian stock market. Argentina currency. First of all, I need the Argentinian currency, right? So I'm going to have to change my $10,000. It was one to one, right? One to one exchange rate, I'm going to get pesos 10,000, right? Great, I invest that in stocks, right? So I'm going to invest in an ETF, which is the main companies, top companies on the index in Argentina, right? So I invest my money in the ETF. It gets to 2002. The ETF is up 50%. I'm happy. <laughs> Right? What should I do here? At the same time as the spot. Swap the exchange rate. So at the spot, I do this transaction, dollars to pesos, right? So what, what should I do here too? I know I'm going to change the money back because my son is going to college, right? Yes. So what should I do here? I know I need to change the money back in 2002. In exchange rate. Forward. I'm going to make a forward. Okay. The interest rate is the same. The forward contract is one to one. Okay. So two years later, it's the same. So two years later, my ETF is up fifty percent. I'm going to get back how much money? Fifteen thousand pesos. Okay. Fifteen thousand pesos. How many dollars am I going to get back? $15,000. $15,000. What if I didn't make a foreign exchange, a forward, or use the swap system? Okay, the, there, was a, this, there was a crisis in Argentina, the exchange rate changed 1 to 4. How much money would I get back? Divide 4. By 15,000 by 4, how much? 4,025. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so it would be 3,500, right? Something like that. 3,750. 
So, I, if I had didn't make a forward contract, I would have got just this much money back. If I made a forward contract, can the bank say to me, "Sorry, uh, I don't want to do that anymore"? <laughs> That's not a good exchange rate. I don't want to do that. Can the bank say that? No, it's a contract, right? Maybe if the bank went bankrupt, then you're in trouble. But you might have made this contract with a US bank, probably, right? With Citibank or Goldman Sachs, not with an Argentinian bank. So you're probably all right. Okay, so this is called a hedging. So if you buy a fund, you can hedge the foreign exchange risk. Okay? So a lot of investment people do this when the currency in a country gets weak suddenly. Why do you think people would do that when they invest in stocks in, when a country's currency is weak? For example, Japan. Over the last three years, Japan's currency got about 40% weaker against the dollar. Was the Jap Japanese stock market going up or down? Going up. We just talked about in the last, if the Japanese currency gets weaker, will the Japanese company make more profit in yen or less profit in yen? More profit in yen. More profit in yen, right? But what's the problem? The yen is getting weaker. Right? But if I made a forward contract when I invested in Japan, am I worried about the yen getting weaker? No. No, I'm not. The stock market is going up in yen. I'm getting the same yen back at the time I invested. Okay? So sometimes investors, if they think in a country the currency is going to get weaker, they're doing QE. Okay? They think the stock Exporting country like Japan or Germany, stock market is going to go up. People invested about sixty billion dollars in the in the German stock market uh, just in a few months last year. Why? Because the European Central Bank said it was going to do QE. So people expect the euro will get weaker. We saw the euro got weaker, right? So they suddenly started investing in German stocks. Do you think those people made a forward contract or no forward contract? Forward contract? Of course they made a forward contract. That's their plan, right? If they invested in German stocks without getting a forward contract, they're not going to get any profit. Okay? The Euro, they expect the Euro to get weaker. Okay? So they, a lot of money went into German stocks, but at the same time, people were making this. So that's called a swap. Okay? On the same day, I decide to invest in Germany. I buy my euros, but I also make a forward contract for the future. So when I change it back, I get the profit. I don't lose my profit with the weakening of the currency. Do people understand that? Hmm? Do you understand that kind of transaction? A swap means the technique of the hedging technique? Yes. It's a hedging technique, yes. So it's the same for me. I, if I want to invest some money in Europe these days, I'm not going to buy a fund which is not hedged because I expect the euro to get weaker. Okay? So I buy stocks in Europe. The euro gets weaker. I change them back to Korean won. I'm going to have less money. Okay? But I make a forward contract. Then it's fine. But I don't have to make a forward contract. Okay? My fund is going to do that. So I buy a fund and the fund makes... Uh, for a contract, okay? They they are hedging the uh, hedging the risk of the change in the exchange rate. So people often you can see that the stock market is going up, the currency is getting weaker, the same amount, right? Currency getting weaker, stock market going up, same amount, because especially in the exporting com countries, as their currency gets weaker, their profits is going up. So, investors want to take advantage of that. Do you have any question about swap, swaps? Any other technique in swaps? Swaps, just any reason, any reason that you need money, just for one period of time, and then you're going to change it back again later. So, any overseas investment could be like that, right? So, companies, invest the money overseas, but they need the money back later, they're going to use a swap. <clears throat> For buying and selling things, it's more forward contracts, because we don't, 
cost, we just need the forward part of it more so. Okay? Like, I'm buying British bicycles, but I don't need to pay the money for three months. Okay? So, I just, in that case, I'm just going to do a forward contract. After three months, I need to buy the British pounds and sell the US dollars. I want it to be the same exchange rate as today, more or less. Then I make just a forward contract. So swap is, I need to send the money away and take it back again. <clears throat> if you're going on holidays, what kind of transaction are you going to use? Spot, forward, or swap? Forward, you're going to get money before you go on holidays, a long time before. You want to keep the exchange rate stable. I do. Maybe you're not using that much money, but uh, it might be if you expect your currency to get weaker, you could make forward contract, okay, if you're going on holidays. But uh, mainly we'll use spot. We'll just go to the bank and change our money. Let's talk about trading times. So foreign exchange trades on a 24-hour basis with major financial centers open Monday through Friday. Weekday trading begins in Sydney, Australia, Monday morning at 6 a.m. Okay. That is 4 p.m. in New York, 8 p.m. in London. Okay. Weekend tra weekday trading ends in New York at 5 p.m. Uh, weekend takes place in the Middle East with offshore banks. So let's have, it's clear on the map, right? So do you ever watch New Year's Day? Where does the New Year's Day celebration start? Where is the first place the New Year's Day? We all, I always see in the news in Ireland, they show some fireworks. Where is the first country which has fireworks? Australia or Asia, right? Over here. And then, moves around along the world. Finally, the US in the end, right? So the market's open here in Asia, then open in London, and then open in New York, okay? So we can see the times here. Now, uh, there's overlaps is the important one. Do you understand overlap? Overlapping time. Tokyo overlaps with London, okay? London overlaps with New York. No overlap between Tokyo and New York. Tokyo is closed when New York opens. So the Asian markets, if you're watching Bloomberg, do you ever watch Bloomberg? Or C, uh, CNBC? Mm -hmm. Well, they show the ringing of the bell in New York, right? The ringing of the bell will be after the markets are closed in Korea. Okay, but London is open overlapping with both of them. So London has this unique position, geographical positioning. Okay. So London enjoys a trading day which overlaps. Trading in London in the afternoon, US in the morning. Trading in London in the morning, Asia in the afternoon. Okay. So it isn't surprising that the currency market is most active when the sessions overlap. So here we can see this is when the currency market is much more active, in the middle of the day when London overlaps with Asia and London overlaps with New York. Okay. So this is the morning in Asia, closing in Asia but opening in Europe, uh, opening in the US, closing in London, closing in the US. So here is London, most of the trades are taking place in London. <coughs> So, let's look at the time of transaction. So, spot exchange rates usually takes two business days. So, if you go to the bank, they're not going to ask you to wait for two days to get your money, right? For going on holidays. But, let's say you asked the bank, you went to the bank, and you brought in $10,000 or $100,000 in cash. You give them $100,000 in cash, and you say, Give me Chinese RMB or give me Japanese yen. Do the bank have that much Japanese yen ready to give you? No, they don't, right? So usually it takes uh, two different business days for spot exchange rate. 
to be settled. Okay, especially if it's a large amount of money. So we do the transaction today, but it takes two days for the money to be delivered. The difference reflects the time needed to confirm the agreement and to arrange the transfer of funds across international centers. So the bank doesn't have that much money, they'll need to get a transfer from another international bank. So forward exchange rates, three business days and later. Okay. Forward markets are used to protect, it's like sun cream, right? In the guy who invested in Argentina, he was protecting himself against the exchange rate change, right? Uh, against unexpected future changes in exchange rates. Forward rate allows businesses and investors to lock in an exchange rate for some future period of time. Do you understand lock? Yes. Okay, lock, it means I'm sure it's going to be one to one. Okay, locked. The price of the forward exchange rate of a forward contract is based on the spot rate at the time when the deal is booked with an adjustment which represents the interest rate difference between two currencies. So we'll explain that in more detail later, but just now simply, let's take the yen, it has 0% interest rate, okay? Let's say the Australian dollar has got a 10% interest rate, okay? So the exchange rate, let's just say one Australian dollar is equal to 100 yen. Okay? So what is going to be the forward rate next year? Well, that's the spot rate. So the forward rate is going to be the difference of the, we're going to use the difference of the interest rate. Can anybody tell me which currency is going to get stronger and which one is going to get weaker? This is the interest rate, but it's also inflation. Yes. Inflation in Japan is zero. Inflation in Australia is 10%. So which currency do we expect to get weaker? Australian dollar by how much? 10%, right? So then what's the... Bank, what's the exchange rate the bank is going to give us? So what? Which got stronger and which got weaker? The Australian dollar got weaker, so do I need... Does one Australian dollar get me more yen or less yen? Less yen. Less yen, right? The one is going to be... 90 yen, right? For example. Okay. So... This is the forward rate. It's going to be different than the spot, based on the spot rate, but different because of the difference in inflation and interest rates. Okay. Now, because of the carry trade, this might not happen. Okay. So people who are doing the carry trade, they might uh, expect that it will actually go the other way. Okay. Are people doing the carry trade going to make the forward contract? No, right? If I do the carry trade and I make a forward contract, I'll get 10%, I'll get more interest in Australia, I'll get 10% more interest, right? But if I make a forward contract, I'm locked into this exchange rate. Okay? And I'm going to get 10% less. So it's going to be the same. So there's going to be no point to do the carry trade. If I do the carry trade, I'm not going to make a forward contract, and I'm going to hope that it goes the other way, right? It goes to 1 is to 110. And then I get 10% here and 10% here, so I get 20%. Okay? So, <coughs> that's speculate, because companies are different. Companies prefer certainty. Okay? Investor in the stock market might prefer. It. I want to speculate on stocks, not on the currency. So, this, using this is you want to take the currency out of the equation, right? I want to make a profit by selling my product, not by currency speculation. Okay? I want to make a profit by the stock market going up, not by currency speculation. So this helps me to cut out the currency problem. Keep it stable. This is more or less stable. In real life, the difference is not going to be 10%. It's going to be more like you know, 3%. Okay? So it's going to be even closer. Okay? It will be 97 then. Right? So it's not that big difference. We saw that the exchange rate can change more than that. 
So this is the forward exchange rate. <coughs> so uh, here we have a uh, country and the currency. So this is the spot exchange rates on the 25th and 26th of September. 25th is on this side, 26th is on this one. So here we have the Australian dollar. 25th of September, it was one Australian dollar was 1.0390 US dollars. Okay? One US dollar was 0.9640. Okay, so what I want you to do is look at these currencies and tell me, did the currency get stronger or weaker from Tuesday to Wednesday? Twenty fifth to the twenty sixth, what happened to the currency? Each one. So discuss with your partner. Did they appreciate or depreciate? Which currency got stronger and which currency got weaker? Maybe each one. Against the dollar. 